rational, you know, coherent, intelligent, intelligent type of, of, of entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for us, you get a little bit, you know, it's warts and all, you know, you, 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 we're doing it on the fly here. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think it gives an interesting look into the, you know, the, the dark underworld of what it takes to get a podcast. The, done. the seedy underworld of podcast, if you will. It's the underworld of podcast land. Mm. You know? There you go. Throwing your catchphrase in there. Well, that's, that's what catchphrases are for. Really. Oh, true. So what, what did you see this past week? Oh, man, I don't even... Oh, um, well, um, I was really excited because the a show that I've been into for a couple years now, uh, and, and not only myself, but a whole lot of other people, because it's a very popular and critically acclaimed show, Homeland, on Showtime, mm -hmm. came back, started uh, season three, and um, uh, I like I like what, what I saw. It's kind of... It, if you don't know the show, Damien Lewis, Claire Danes, Mandy Patinkin, it's a lot about uh, the CIA and, um, you know, the the main framework of the show has kind of been built around Damien Lewis's character. He he was captured uh, by Al-Qaeda, um, was held prisoner for, I think, seven years, and then was, um, was found by U.S. troops. And when he was liberated, um, he was kind of brought back as a hero. But really, he had been turned by Al Qaeda to to be a terrorist against his own country, and that was kind of spoiler. Spoiler. Well, that was, that happens in the you know early first season, uh, so you know there was th that's kind of the, the the basis for it. But they get a little far out last I think last uh, uh, last season season two got a little out there. I, th I think some of the criticisms of it were it was it was you know not very realistic. I think they're getting back to their roots now. It seems like it's it's a little bit more about uh, the running of the CIA and kind of how, you know, how we fight terrorism abroad and that sort of thing. And uh, uh, I'm I'm pretty excited about uh, what we get in season three. Um, have you have you ever seen that show, Vince? I've seen a couple of episodes, but you mentioned abroad, and I really kind of want to get into did Claire. Does Claire Danes get naked at any point during this show? Uh, I don't think Claire Danes actually gets naked, but. Um, uh, Marina Baccarin, I think that's how you say her name. Uh, right, from V and... Uh, she was in V and she was in... Firefly. Firefly, yes. Yeah. Um, very attractive, uh, very attractive young lady. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she shows it. I mean, right out... First season, right out of the gate. Now you got my interest. Yeah, now... Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Claire Danes... Like Bonerland, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, Claire Danes, though, I do not believe I've seen her get naked on there. But oh, she's, well, you know, we can always hope. But she's attractive. and we she's got the rest of season two. And she does get down. I mean, there's a few scenes where she gets down. And she's really crazy. So if you're into that sort of thing, yeah, she's a little, a little crazy in the head. Mm -hmm. So it makes her a little hotter, you know. We'll case the KKs. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But um, really excited about what's going on with that show. I think it's, I think it's going to be, be good move forward. And uh, I would recommend it based on the previous two seasons for sure. I'll have to check it out. You know if it's on Netflix or anything? Um, I believe the early seasons are. But it's definitely on Showtime, uh, the on the go or whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's probably mixing HBO and Showtime. Possibly. But, but uh, it, is, it is out there. I believe the early seasons are, are available. Now, one of the writers, actually, um, I think she was a writer and producer from Homeland, um, after last season, broke off to do her own show, um, uh, Meredith Stein, I believe is how you pronounce her name. She was um, a big part. Of, she's had all kinds of TV success over the years. But one of her shows, uh, or her new show, I should say, it was The Bridge, which mm -hmm. I did in a, a, lengthy, uh, <laughs> a lengthy blog post review of this right. uh, a few weeks back. Now, we, uh, one of the things that happened this week for me uh, in my television watching was getting to see the season finale of The Bridge. Um, as if you want to check out my full review on the show, I gave it a pretty high rating. Uh, I really enjoy that show, but the the season finale occurred this week and uh, left some really interesting uh, storylines hanging for next season, and it has been picked up for another season, so Great. I'm excited about that. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking out that show. Uh, I believe all the episodes are available online if you go to The Bridge on FX. I believe you can see... Um, it's not on, like, FX, X, X, no, X. It's, no, it's just on regular FX. Okay. No extra Xs. Mm. Um, but, uh, Diane Kruger and Damien, uh, Bashir are the, the main characters and I really like what they did. It's kind of, it's kind of got that gritty, you know, 
hyper realistic kind of feel to it, a little similar to to maybe something like so uh, it's not a cartoon, like a Breaking Bad or something. No, okay. it's not a cartoon. Okay, but uh, at the end of this, uh, I will say this: at the end of the finale, you do kind of get a little bit of you know, mission Breaking Bad. You kind of get a little bit of that Breaking Bad kind of feel when you see that Damian Bashir looks like he's going to the dark side, going to be doing some things, like are, doing meth and stuff like that. Maybe not meth, okay, but, but maybe more. But they do deal with drug cartels and stuff, but. Uh, mm. Yeah, I think he might be looking to do some revenge killing. In the next, so yeah, that looks looks pretty good. But I big would recommend fan of revenge kills. Yeah, revenge killing is a big you know uh, you know big passion of mine. Mm-hmm. So I enjoy the show. Pastime, yeah, if you will. Yep. Oh, uh, you, you check out anything uh, this week? Oh, I, I've seen all kinds of shit this week. Uh, I, I saw two things that are kind of related. I, I would say because it's by the same production company. I saw both Ass Backwards and uh, Hell Baby. Oh. Yep. Now, Ass Backwards, it, it uh, stars June Diane Raphael from one of our favorite podcasts, uh, How Did This Get Made? And she's also in NTSV, SUV, SD, I don't know, it's got a bunch of letters. Yeah, SD, uh, SUV. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Casey Wilson. Uh, and it, the movie's enjoyable. It, you know, I, it, they even compared themselves to Romy and Michelle a little bit, and it's a lot like that. I hate to interrupt you, but I do need to point out that they are both attractive young ladies. Um both uh, June Diane and Casey Wilson. So. They did not get naked in this, however. So, I will, well, actually, they pulled their pants down at one point, but it's blocked by people's heads. But oh, it's weak. I know. You know, you can use your imagination, which I did. I did, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I think uh, I've got a product for them later on by one of our sponsors. But we'll get to that. Uh, I thought they were a great comedy duo. I mean, I mean if, if you think about it, there's not a lot of women comedy duos that stand out. To me, you think of French and Saunders, Laverne and Shirley, Lucy and Ethel. And I'd say they're kind of in that vein. As a matter of fact, I, I, I think they should look into doing an American version of Absolutely Fabulous because I, I think they're a good uh, comedic team. They did an American version of that already, though, didn't they? Oh, they did? Yeah. Was that Cagney and Lacey? No. Oh, it was a different show. No. Um, it was called Absolutely Fabulous, and wow. Maybe it wasn't that fabulous? Uh, absolutely not that fabulous. Uh, it did not do well in the ratings, from what I understand, but uh, maybe we can look up, we'll look up who, who did that. Mm-hmm. Um, because I can only think, yeah, that it existed, but I can't think of who was in it. I'm going to pitch this to Miss June. She is at Miss June uh, at, on, on Twitter, and... You know, I'd hate to name drop, but we are friends on there, and she does frequently uh, favorite my stuff. So, you know, I can uh, I can see, you know, what what the, get get some feelers out there, and uh, maybe write her up a little treatment, uh, a little one episode deal, and uh, see if we can sell that to her. Now, is it now that's available on something called video on demand, right? Yeah, no. yeah. I I don't know about that video on demand, man. Well, <laughs> I was. <yeah. laughs> Well, I mean, uh, some people demand their video. I demanded it. I, I was standing in front of my television set not three nights ago, demanding that they play that movie, and I never, it never played. I was kind of lost after that. So, it, well, this Gravitas Ventures, who did both uh, Ass Backwards and Hell Baby, that seems to be their thing. They they like to release these movies on VOD. Um, I've got the, uh, you know, I, I like the internet. I like watching things on my iPad. So usually this works out pretty well for me. Uh, cause you can just kind of, for some, whatever reason, if I demand it from my iPad, my iPad delivers, but that's just, uh, maybe Apple products for you. You know, I'm an Apple guy. It's maybe, you know, it's the Android thing for you. It's just not working out. Maybe yeah, should... maybe that's it. Now, can I coin a new, uh, new term now? Can we call it, can we call them vodcasts? Like VOD? I, th- I think that would be, uh, I think that would be appropriate. And you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, now called vodcasts. So no, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, see, I don't know. That's two strikes. Yeah. So Hell Baby was interesting. It uh, stars Rob Corddry, uh, Leslie Bibb, Alex Burb, Keegan Michael Key, who you know from Key and Peele. I'm sorry, did you say Alex Burb? Berg. Oh, okay, Berg. Sorry. He uh, played Mrs. Noosebaum. Okay, okay. Which is a name from The Jerk. Uh, oddly enough, it's the fake credit card they use when they're, uh, when they're getting tires. and st- Well, I won't get into all that. But, well, as long uh, as we have a voucher. Mrs. Newsman. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Keegan-Michael Key, that's uh, Key and Peele, right? Key and Peele. Uh, excellent, yeah, excellent. Yeah. Great and, show. And the, I mean, he, he's hilarious in it. Uh, Robert Ben Grant and Thomas Lennon, who you know from oh. Reno 911. Uh, 
they just should hope that they're not going to be sued by uh, Don Novello for their portrayal of uh, the the two Italian priests. I mean, it, they were basically channeling him the whole time. Uh, Michael Ian Black, uh, Rob Hubel, and of course, you know, another guy we're a big fan of, Paul Shear. I uh, was in there. Rob and Paul play a couple of cops that, and I, I think they're probably the best in the movie. And, uh, and I should, I shouldn't. We should note that um, Leslie Bibb, very attractive, very attractive. Yeah, very attractive. Even even when she's pregnant with a hell baby. Yeah, I mean, she had that glow. Mm-hmm. Well, it was more like a fiery type of glow from the pits but, yeah, of hell, but it was a glow. It was all a this, glow. All I mean, the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I enjoyed the movie. It was nice. Uh, you know, I, I would say it belongs on video on demand. It's definitely not maybe theater worthy. Uh, really, it felt like one of uh, maybe a skit that was kind of stretched out for like an hour and a half. And that goes for both movies, really. Uh, had that kind of sketch feeling to it. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. And, it. and it starred a bunch of people that I, I like and I enjoy and we seem to hear a lot on our on the podcast we listen to, so that was enjoyable. So it may just be both may be doomed to stay in vodcast land. Yes, yes. Well, I don't. You know, I, you got to kind of stick with one type of catch. Well, see, you I was trying really, to go with yeah. I was trying you can't to can't really kind of like it a little bit. meld it into other things. It just you know you can't use it for everything. I Man, I'm trying. Uh, did you see anything else or got anything else? I got a couple more things. But. Oh, um, well, uh, just what did you, did you happen to see Saturday Night Live on uh, Saturday night? What I did see was a video that came out of that that was supposed to be uh, Boehner and, uh, well, it was supposed to be Michelle Bachman, but it was Miley Cyrus. And I don't know who the guy who plays Boehner. I don't know what his name is. Uh, Tarm Killen. Is that, is that who that was? I believe so, yeah. You know, they're really, you know, it's gone a little viral. We, we, we talked about this off air earlier right. a little bit. It's gone viral. You know, when I saw it at the time, I, I don't know. I, it, I didn't like it all that much. I didn't, I didn't really like that episode very much. But, you know, they've got a lot of new cast members. Always takes a little bit of time for Saturday Night Live to kind of get there when the new cast members come on to kind of, you know, get a good flow going again. But, uh, yeah, I uh, was not not terribly impressed. Not a big Miley Cyrus fan, uh, so maybe I missed, you know, that appeal. But... Uh, I will say with that video, my mm. my my main uh, criticism of that was the only reason that you knew that that was uh, John Boehner, Speaker of the House John Boehner, of course, and um, His Excellency John Boehner, was that they put his name up on the screen with a graphic. Otherwise, I would have had no idea. I thought kind of the deep tan gave it away as well. Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't get that. But uh, you know, I mean, it, it, the spirit was good. You know, making fun of. You know, Congress. I'm all for it. Have you seen uh, Miley Miley Cyrus's uh, Wrecking Ball? Yeah, I think it's Wrecking. It's Wrecking something uh, video. Uh, she's naked through most of it. That's her thing now. She doesn't wear a lot of clothing. That's like yeah. her thing. Um, looks, it, pre- looks pretty good. Now, one thing I will say: What's the name of the song that they did that uh, "We Won't Stop" or something like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, she did that song. It's the second of her. She was the musical guest as well. I should say that she did Wrecking Ball for the first. Uh, for the first musical interlude. Um, and she was wearing like a see-through Jersey thing with a bikini underneath it. So, you know, that's hot. It was all right. But the second, uh, musical interlude, she did the, um, that song from the video, but she did it as a, uh, acoustic guitar. It was three acoustic guitars. Um, and one of them was a little person. One of the guitarists was a little person which I don't know if she usually t- tours with a little person or not, but he was playing like a smaller guitar. And, um, yeah, when they got done, she fist bumped him and everything. That's just, that's yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah. I, that was the most entertaining part of the whole program for me. Was it a recognizable little person like Wee man or, um, uh, let's see who else is. <laughs> I'm sure it was recognizable. Gary to somebody. Oldman from tiptoes oh you know what no it wasn't gary oldman actually dorf on golf no it was not tim conway either mm. um and you know i'm sure it was recognizable to somebody like his family friends other little people i mean you i guess if you're a little person you wouldn't you follow the career of other little people maybe a little more closely i can't say it was not peter dinklage and it was not warwick davis okay um it was not gary oldman and it was not tim conway the guy, what about the guy who played R2-D2? 
I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. Well, he wasn't wearing the R two D two outfit, so oh, it's hard so it for me to. So it could, it have, been. could have been. It could have been. Mm-hmm. I, I might not have recognized him without the outfit on. We're just gonna. I'm just gonna say it was. Yeah. Well, you know, actually, it made it really cool, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was. You know, I will say. 